Hi, everybody. Welcome to Better Than Never. <laughs> Yes. I'm not actually inside a women's prison at the moment. The yes, you are, dude. Went up to like 11. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I would say a big f you to Nick. All right, we gotta. I got too much to do. There's no other game coming up. I'm just gonna turn the intro down. Away we go. It's gonna run underneath, but we're just gonna get started. We are just gonna get started. I'm excited to be podcasting on a game day. It feels like forever since we've done this. You know what I mean? Six days. Trying to figure out, is this break a good thing? Is it a bad thing? We'll talk about it. We will talk about it. First, I got to kick off the podcast, giving a shout out to the audio department, theaudiodepartment.ca. They make dreams happen. Of course, they work to create a safe space for creativity and collaboration for artists and musicians to realize their potential and share their message through sound and story. Theaudiodepartment.ca, book a studio, book some time. And again, I talked about this last week. One of the coolest things that I found out that they do at the audio department, they have got stacked equipment, stacked equipment in there. And I think that that is a really, really cool part of what they do. They've got some really intense, some really cool items in there that, you know, chances are you've never seen before. So if you're high end, if you're in a band, you want to make a podcast, get in there. Um, that Danny Danger on Instagram, he is my liaison with the audio department. He goes, I actually had the pleasure of miking up the one and only Daryl McIntyre for some radio spots for a lottery fundraiser. And if I had to describe the feeling of hearing that man speaking through a, a gorgeous, some gorgeous audio equipment, it would be bonerific. <laughs> Daryl McIntyre, you can be like Daryl McIntyre and record as well at the audio department.ca book some studio time. Shout out to Danny. I always like getting those tidbits from him. And he just straight up helps me when I need it. Got it? Good. Uh, first off, I want to start off with a couple of things, personal items. Frank, uh, dental surgery went well. That was last week. I was worried about it. I'm just neurotic. You know how it goes. I've mentioned that countless times on this podcast over the last year and a half, two years almost actually. I'm just neurotic, and it all went well. He got his recheck this morning, actually. So this is Wednesday, December 6th. Recheck went well. The stitches have dissolved. I don't know how that works. Dissolving stitches, that is. When did they decide to stop working? Like, tying things together. How long does it take to dissolve? What do they taste like? Did he swallow them? Did he spit them out? Is there little pieces of dissolving string somewhere in my house, and I just haven't found them yet? Anyway. These are questions that don't really need answers. The most important thing is that everything is looking good. He is sitting beside me right now. He is on the Frank mic. He is not on the Frank mic. It's turned on. Always has been. Listen, we've got 120 episodes of this podcast, and not once has Frank spoken into his microphone that is always on. I've got the fader up. He is right beside it. Can't hear shit. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is it is also December 6th. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. There's barely any snow outside. I like it. I like it a lot. I know some of you are upset. You like a white Christmas. And I mean, there's still, what, 19 days until Christmas. So you got time to get there. But for me, not me. No, no, no. I love not having snow. I love driving and knowing that I'll be able to stop when I press my brakes. That's not to say I'm a speed demon when it snows and when it's icy. I'm just saying it's just a fact of life of driving in Edmonton. I guarantee if you're listening to this and you are of the age to drive. I learned how many teenagers listen to this podcast over the last handful of, <laughs> handful of weeks. Um, you know what it's like to slide through an intersection. You're like, no, no, stop fucking car. I'm into it. Brown Christmas, snowless Christmas. I don't care. Give it to me. We haven't had one of these in forever. I don't remember the last time. It feels like it's been like 15 years, something like that. Edmonton went through November without snowfall for the first time in a hundred years. Give it to me all the way until Christmas. I know we got snow a couple of days ago. It's pretty much gone. It's melted. It was nine degrees yesterday. Chalmers was probably wearing flip-flops wherever he was. Fucking awesome. It is awesome. And I don't care what you say. I've got reasons why you're wrong. Just let me have this. Yeah, you could be like, bag milk, there's going to be environmental concerns and drought, and then we need the snow for the moisture. Listen, this podcast has no room for logic and science. This is about me talking on my ass. And what my ass is telling me is, it's nice outside. 
I'm going to enjoy it while I can. Because I feel like also in January, February, we're going to pay for this somehow. It is going to be painful. It is going to be dire. We're all going to be very cold. Be like, Remember in December when there's no snow and I was complaining about it? Not me. Not me. I'm enjoying life as it comes. I'm enjoying life as it comes. Let's get to the news. The news is brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. If there's one thing better than sharing memories, it's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross Travel Insurance protects your memories and more wherever travel takes you. Visit ab.bluecross.ca forward slash travel for more information. You can also join us on the nation vacation to Arizona coming up in February. That's the family day, a long weekend. We've got two packages now. There's the standard package, and then there's the no flights package. You just want to be down there, or maybe you're already down there for something else. You want to join us? We got options, Playboy. We got options. Join us, nationgear.ca. Get the details you want. We're going to go watch the boys play at Mullet Arena. It's tiny. It's little. We're going to take up a whole section. We're essentially 10% of the entire crowd. Not really. <laughs> your M-Chuck math. Anyway. Uh, we'll see you there. Nationgear.ca. That is really what I want you to go to. You go to nationgear.ca, you buy a travel package to come with us to Arizona, or you buy some new fresh threads, put them under the tree for Christmas. You will look way sexier than you did pre-Christmas. That is a promise. All right, let's get to some news. Let's get to some business. The big thing everybody wants to talk about this week is um, the Philip Broberg rumors. Philip Broberg reported that reported it did 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 reportedly from my friend frank saravalli and yes i call him a friend because i love him he has been granted permission to find a trade around the league to see if there's a better fit out there can you tell me what that means it just sounds like hey man we can't find a place for you to go if you want to trade out of town that's fine but you gotta do all the work because i am tired of you is that what it's like i don't know Satan, I feel like you might be on something. Of course I'm on to something. I'm the Lord of fucking darkness. I know everything. Listen, if Philip Broberg actually wants a trade out of Edmonton, I kind of get it in the sense that it's he was drafted in 2019. Again, if you go back to the 2019 draft party, we talked about it on, the, uh, on Oilers Nation Radio yesterday. Go check that out. That crowd at the bar we were at was very split. Some people were like, fuck yeah. 6'4 defenseman. He's got all kinds of wheels. This is exactly what we need to compliment Evan Bouchard, who's drafted the year before. Others were like, this was a reach pick. A lot of people had him at a late first round, early second round pick. There was a very, very split. So what's happened since? In the year since, Philip Broberg has played 79 games in the NHL. He has two goals, nine assists for 11 points, averaging over the course of that time, 1236 in TOI. Time on ice. That's not where you expect a top five or a top five, top 10 pick to be, frankly, four years out from his draft. You would expect him to be contributing a little bit more. And if you look at his draft class, he is by far falling behind those who were drafted in the top 10. If you want to look, if you want me to give you a quick rundown, New Jersey, Jack Hughes, very good. Uh, New York Rangers, Capo Caco, he's played 259 games. Probably not as good as some people thought he was going to be, but he's doing fine. Kirby Doc went to Chicago. Bo, Bo and Byron went to Colorado. Alex Turcott went to Los Angeles. He is one of the few that played fewer games so far than Philip Broberg. Maurice Sider went to Detroit. He's a stud. Dylan Cousins went to Buffalo. Stud. Philip Broberg at eight. Up next was Trevor Zegras. That was the guy a lot of Oilers fans wanted in 192 games. He has 141 points. That would be nice. Vasily Podzolkin went to Vancouver at number 10. He's played 118 games. At 50, Victor Soderstrom went to Arizona. He's played 50 games. But then you look at some of the other names on the list. Would have been nice to get Matthew Boldy. He's looking real good in Minnesota. Cole Caulfield scoring goals in Montreal. I knew he's little. You know, Peyton Krebs in Vegas. Would have been nice. Would have been nice. So I get one side of the angle that says, or one side of the argument that just says, listen, this guy hasn't done anything with the opportunity that we've given him. It's time to pull the pin. And if you can use him in a trade to go acquire a piece that helps the Oilers today, that's what you should do because Philip Broberg is not going to help the Oilers win today. December, uh, December 6th, 2023. If he's a healthy scratch. Uh, DNB, 
uh, Daniel Nugent Bowman from The Athletic was on low town, low down, low tide on Sports 1440 the other day. And he goes, I think a trade is closer to imminent on Daily Face Off Live today. Frank said he thinks it's about a 70 percent, 60 to 70 percent chance he gets traded in the next month. So it's looking like time is winding down for Philip Robert. On the other side of the argument, you go, well, the Oilers fumble fucked his development a little bit. The Oilers didn't do him any solids by just not giving him the playing time and having him yo-yo up and down between the AHL, between the NHL. He's been doing this for about three years now. The counter argument there would be he hasn't really seized the opportunity he has been given. He's now played NHL games under three different NHL coaches, Dave Tippett, Jay Woodcroft, and now Chris Knobloch. And the irony is Chris Knobloch, the newest guy, has played him less than anyone. So what is it about his game right now that these coaches just, listen, if we're going to do 11 and 7, you're going to be in there as the seven defenseman. You'll get some opportunity maybe, but if you fuck up, you're going to be riding the pine. Where does he end up? Who is the Philip Broberg of some other team? Meaning who is a young guy who's kind of tied up behind some other players that isn't really making the progress you would have expected him to? Right? Who is that guy? I'm not smart enough to know. I'm just not. It's just the way it goes. And sometimes things just don't work out, right? Sometimes you need a change of pace. Or sometimes things just don't work out. You look at the Oilers drafting, it's been terrible. From Bruce McCurdy over at the Edmonton Journal. With word today, this uh, tweet was from yesterday, by the way. With word today that Philip Roberg may be, uh, may be shopped Let's review how Ken Holland era draft picks are helping the Oilers this current season. Bruce goes, Broberg, number eight in 2019. He's played 10 games, no points, minus two. Raphael Lavoie, number 38, 2019. So the next pick after Broberg, he has played six games, no points, minus two. Dylan Holloway, the 14th overall pick in 2020, 14 games played, one goal, minus three. He is obviously injured. All other draft picks by Ken Holland over that time, zero games played, Zero, 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 according to Bruce McCurdy from the journal. Needless to say, it's not good. You cannot build your team through free agency. You have to build portions of it, at the very least, through the draft. Don't even fucking point Vegas at me. They're an outlier. But the point is, we need guys to kind of come in and seize the day, kind of seize the opportunity, kind of grab it by the balls and be like, this is my job and I'm not giving it up. And I hate to say it because they're completely different players. They're completely different. I mean, they're both defensemen, I suppose. They're one's left-handed, one's right-handed. Blah, blah, blah. But like you look at Vincent DeHarnay. He was given an opportunity with the Oilers last January and he didn't give it up. I'm not saying he's a perfect player. I'm not. There's times when Vinny drives me nuts. But what I will never question is that he gives it an all-out effort every single night, and you notice him in both positive and negative ways. I don't know that you can say the same really about Philip Broberg all that much on the positive side. Now, there's some things where, like, like the Oilers are playing Carolina tonight, and I'll talk about that later. But the last time the Oilers played Carolina, the only thing I remembered about Philip Broberg was that he fell on his ass. And a goal went in. And again, that wasn't even his fault. It was, there was a stick that had fallen. He didn't see it behind him. Like, it's not his fault, but it's ultimately his problem. I feel bad for the guy. I do. I really honestly do. If you look at his, uh, his fancies, I'm at natural stat trick right now. This year, he's got a 49.37 Corsi 4. He's got an XGF. Where's his XGF here? Where are you? Uh, an expected goals percentage of 53-11. So his his numbers would suggest that he's better than what the opportunity he's been given. Is he going to go figure it out somewhere else? I hope so. Can he figure it out here? I hope so. I'm not in control of what happens with him. I just ultimately know sometimes it doesn't work out. I think of Yes Pugliarvi. I love the guy. I love what he did. I loved when he was at the top of his game playing his best. And by the way, nice to see him. He's getting on the ice over in Finland right now. I think he's going to be bouncing back here at some point. At least he's going to get an opportunity. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yes, Pugliarvi didn't work in Carolina either. There's a reason they didn't qualify him, right? What's the answer? I don't have one. I'm just going to sit and watch. I just sit there. I watch. I'm like Arnold Schwarzenegger in, uh, what's that movie? True Lies. We're sitting in the corner with a tape recorder and a cigarette. That's what I'm doing. I'm in the dark. Dance slowly. Sexy. Yes. So anyway... Are we winding down the Philip Broberg time at Edmonton? Seems that way. 
Of course, it's not without its controversy. Yesterday, TSN's Ryan Rashog tweeted out some very, very funny quotes uh, that it only seems to happen to the Oilers, really. Ken Holland says he, and I quote from Rashog, Ken Holland says he has not granted permission for Darren Ferris to show up the Broberg trade. Um, and I quote, I have not granted permission to Darren to shop Broberg. Ferris's response, who is the agent, this matter reflects both mine and my client's frustration with the Oilers. <laughs> Again, the agent's doing his job. That's what agents do. He's out there taking the heat. The problem with Bro- Broberg now, this like trade request, if it is a trade request, I'm going to call it a trade request. If this comes out, how does that affect him in the room a little bit? You know, the boys kind of look at him and like, what the fuck, man? You want out of here? Play better. Earn a job. At some point, it is as simple as that. There's politics. There's, you know, relationships. There's favoritism. There's all that shit involved. Of course, we're talking about human beings. But at some point, you have to grab the, the, the fucking bull by the horns and take that opportunity. Nobody's going to be given anything anymore. Is that a generational thing? Am I just sound like an old guy? Being like, you got to work for every opportunity. You got to fucking claw and scratch and bite. I don't know. Feels like it'd just be me. Changing gears entirely. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was very, very funny. Over at the Athletic Dom Decision, he does his like projections based on, you know, his model. However, I don't know what the nerd science is. It's just how it works. Evan Bouchard was listed as eighth overall for Norris trophy potential. Makes sense. He puts up points on mass. Like Eric Carlson won the Norris last year. I'm not comparing the two, by the way, so don't get at me in the mentions. I'm not comparing the two, but, it, you know, Evan Bouchard puts up points. He's at a point per game place uh, pace right now. He is fifth among defensemen in points four. Lots to like about his offensive game. Now, defensively, he's gotten much better over the last handful of weeks. I think a big part of it is Matthias Ekholm also looks more like Matthias Ekholm now that he's up and running at full speed. You know, he missed preseason and training camp. Is that going to help Evan Bouchard? I hope so. We need him to elevate defensively and... I don't think he's ever going to match what he does offensively, but like get close there, like in the ballpark within a $5 cab ride. Is that fair? I think it's fair. Uh, another Oiler listed for an award currently based on Dom's model over at the athletic was Zach Hyman listed at seventh for the heart trophy. Obviously he's leading the Oilers in goals right now. He's consistent. We all love Zach Hyman. He's an author. He's a gentleman. He's a gaming CEO. He is handsome as all hell. He is everything you want in a man listed at seventh place for the Hart Trophy. The fun thing about the model, though, is it doesn't acknowledge McDavid or Dreisaitl, mostly because they've had terrible starts, quote-unquote, by their own standards. They're not terrible starts at all. Most other teams would love to have those starts. Point per game. That's bad. Oh, my God. Anyway, I just find it funny that they're not on the list at all. (laughs) He just, you know, it's funny to me. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's, it's, It's one of those things where you go, wow, you know, Sometimes the computers don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes they do. I think it's a blend of both. Uh, changing gears again. Pivot. Pivot. Um, the Oilers play the Carolina Hurricanes tonight, and they have not been kind. Over their last nine contests, the Carolina Hurricanes are 7-1-1. One, and one. Needless to say, they've stolen our lunch money the last handful of times they've played. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this because chances are by the time you listen to this podcast, the game's going to be over. There's no point in that. I'm going to say it's going to be a 4-2 win for the Oilers. Frank did pick the Carolina Hurricanes today. If you are a subscriber to Frank's picks, I think I'm right. I think Frank's wrong. We shall see what happens. Now, the funny thing about being an Oilers fan this season is that they come into this game against the Hurricanes on a four-game heater, right? 7-3-0 in their last 10. You go, fuck, they're starting to turn it around. And then you look at the standings and you go, oh, shit. They're still in 30th place of 32 teams. 30th of 32. 30 of 32. That's not where we need to be, even after a four-game win streak. So just you see how much work there is left to do. The Oilers are currently eight points out of the second wild card spot behind the St. Louis Blues. Lots are going to change between now and the end of the season, and there's a lot of games left, blah, blah. But then at some point, there's not a lot of games left. The greater point I'm going to get at is the Oilers have to figure out ways to beat teams like the Carolina Hurricanes. Hurricanes are good, no doubt about it. Very, very good team. Lots of skill, lots of speed, lots of hustle. Uh, Rob Brendan Moore has been around for like six, seven years behind the bench. He's got them hopping. Now, the best teams beat the best teams. 
That's just the way it goes. It's just the way it goes. So if the Oilers can beat the Carolina Hurricanes tonight, get a fifth win in a row, that would leapfrog them above the Anaheim Ducks. A spot closer to the wild card. Still plenty of work to do. I'm not saying otherwise. It's just interesting. You know? Looking at the schedule, what we have coming doesn't get easy. Tonight, obviously, Carolina. Minnesota, they play on Friday in town. The Oilers have a six-game homestand, by the way. New Jersey is a 2 p.m. matinee at Rogers Place on Sunday afternoon. And then Chicago, Connor Bedard is going to be in on Tuesday. That's the next four games until the next podcast. You have to win three of those. You have to win three of those. And um, who's the easy one? Chicago, they're a dead last. Maybe you call that an easy one. But the Connor versus Connor thing is going to be fun. Everybody's going to be watching. There's going to be a lot of hype, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be fine. That one I'm counting as a win. So where the other two come from? Can you beat Carolina tonight? They are 6-7-0 and on the road. That means they, this is a doable game. This is an absolutely doable game. Can the Oilers do it? Minnesota, we know Minnesota is not our friend. They're one of those teams that, God knows why, dating back to the late 90s, early 2000s, whenever the fuck they came in with Jacques, De, Jacques Lemaire as their coach. This is a team that just like the, the Oilers have struggled against, and it's annoying. It's very, very annoying. So if I'm, I'm going to pick three wins, I'm going to go Carolina, I'm going to go Minnesota, and I'm going to go Chicago. You have to win those, and they have to be wins in regulation. Although I guess none of these teams are in the Western Conference, are they? I guess I guess Minnesota is. Yeah, you just got to win in regulation. That's the answer. That is absolutely the answer. Speaking of the answer, Darnell Nurse has been playing some good hockey lately, and I, I the reason that I bring him up is because Jason Greger did a little uh, a little tete 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 with Darnell Nurse the other day, and I want to talk about Paul Coffey's influence on Nurse and on the defense as in general. I am admittedly one of the people that was like, why is Paul Coffey here? I get that he was a stud when he played. He's only coached his boys. Minor hockey. Why is he here? Darnell Nurse may have had the answer. Systemically, he just wants us to us D-men to make plays. It frees us up as players to go out there and express ourselves through the game. It's been awesome. Obviously, the insight that he has into the game and the way that he sees things offensively as well as defensively, being up, being aggressive, and not being easy to play against, that's not so much in the physical aspect, just taking up time and space. It's been great for us as a group in terms of like what changes has he made. He goes, nothing too con- Nurse says, nothing too complex. Um, we've been very fortunate to have great, co- great coaches here. Dave Manson, Trent Yanni, Jimmy Johnson, early on Jim Playfair, all different coaches who helped our grow our game in different ways. But coffee has come in with the approach of, I find a lot of times you get into pro and in junior, it's not so much taken away from your game, but trying to simplify and do all the easy things most of the time. But for Paul coffee is more of, we have the ability as a group to make plays to have the confidence to make them. And I think that's what you see through all the pairs now. DeHarnay, Kulak are all making unbe- unbelievable plays on a nightly basis, and it's been a lot of fun to watch. So do I owe Paul Coffey an apology? If this de- defense starts humming, I will give him one. I will write him a thank you card for fixing the defense. If Cody Cece scores tonight against the Hurricanes, as I predicted in the GDB as my not-so-obvious game day prediction, will I thank Paul Coffey? Yeah, probably. Probably. Why wouldn't I? You know? Why wouldn't I? I didn't expect anything from him. In fact, my expectations were ground zero for Paul Coffey. But if he can come in and make some changes that are positive, I am all for it. Uh, The other thing I want to mention in the news is Gina Retta spoke to Jeff Jackson uh, earlier this week. Uh, Connor McDavid was out at the Canada Walk of Fame accepting his, what is that? I want to call it a star, but it's not a star. His plaque. Anyway, Jeff Jackson was out there. If you want to hear more about Connor McDavid, the Walk of Fame, listen to Real Life, listen to ONR. There is a lot of chatter about who was in there in the 2023 class. There was 22 inductees this year. There was a lot of them. Notably, Connor McDavid, obviously, Avril Lavigne, right? Glass Tiger, Trooper. Anyway, feels like if you answered the phone, you got in. Anyway, some of the biggest notes from the Jeff Jackson little mini interview with Gina Retta is the question was 
what is it like in terms of a sense of urgency for you personally to keep Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl long term in Edmonton? Brendan Delaney, who wrote this up for us at Weather's Nation, I agree with his uh, with his with his with his take here is that he doesn't feel a whole lot of urgency. Um, even though on the surface it feels like it's very much do or die. To Jackson, however, he noted that his and other executives' job are to be competing for the Stanley Cup, so there's definitely urgency in windows. However, the two superstars are young and they aren't in the do-or-die territory. I don't know that if I agree with that. I don't know if I agree with that. We'll see. We'll see. How much is the cap going to continue to go up? Next year, we know it's going to 87.7. A big chunk of the increase is going to go straight to Connor Brown's Contract bonus, unless they could find a way to sneak in some of that this year. But Tyler had a whole URM check math bit on this on Wilderness Nation Radio yesterday. Go listen to that. If they can get rid of Jack Campbell and sneak some of that Connor Brown money in, next year the Oilers actually have a ton of cap space to get some stuff done, and it would be great. But is it going to happen? I don't know. Speaking of Jack Campbell, Elliot Friedman was speculating that the Oilers want to give, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, the Oilers want to give Jack Campbell another chance. They want to recall him. But then you go ahead and see the way he performed on Saturday. And two of those goals, I'm pretty sure I could have stopped. And I'm pretty sure I could have stopped them with Sears pads as my pat, or Sears catalogs as my goalie pads. Remember, back in the 90s, the wish book, very, very thick. These days, not even a thing. I could have just taken one of those old wish books, strapped them around my shins and be like, I got this. Jack Campbell, though, led in two of the ugliest goals you will ever see. And it happened at the AHL level. So when do you bring him up? Because he can't show that he can be consistent down there. And I feel bad for the guy because on a human level, he seems like such a sweetheart. He's doing charity work down there. He's probably buying dinners for the boys because he makes all kinds of money. Uh, original Pozar, DM me. I made a joke that he probably makes more money than the entire roster combined and original poser goes oh yeah that's true he does <laughs> so when do you recall him to me it's not anytime soon if that's the plan unfortunately i don't like the plan of running pickard as the backup i think he is probably going to give us better goal setting than jack campbell is overall but it's not a great place to be so when do you give him a shot jack campbell has to string along 5 10 15 games in a row where he looks like a stud at the HL level because he should be. I'm not saying every game has to be a gem, every game has to be a beauty, but at some point you got to expect a guy who's making big bank at the NHL level to outperform people who can't crack the lineup. That's not saying that the HL is a bad league either. I'm just saying that this is a guy who's expected to be a starting goalie in the NHL. He should be dominating at the HL. I don't think that's unfair. You send Connor McDavid again. Connor McDavid is better at his position than Jack Campbell is at his position. Well, if you send Andre Vasilevsky down to the AHL, he is going to give you better than those goals that Jack Campbell allowed on Saturday. What's going to happen? Only time will tell. Maybe there'll be a trade and I can do an emergency podcast. But for now, for our friends at Alberta Blue Cross, that's how we're going to wrap up the news. Alberta Blue Cross. There's only one thing better than sharing memories, and that's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross Travel Insurance protects your memories and more. Wherever travel takes you, visit ab.bluecross.ca forward slash travel. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to snuggle. We don't do nearly enough snuggling on this podcast, by the way. Frank, where are you? Are you around here? Frank, I will snuggle the shit out of you with this down this room. You left. He always leaves. Let's talk a little betting, provided that you are 19 plus and can do so responsibly. Our friends at Betway are here to help make things better for you as a better. My betting luck has changed a little bit, and it's no surprise that the Oilers are playing good hockey, and that means I'm just making a little bit extra money. Now, the last game against the Winnipeg Jets, Evan Bouchard over two and a half shots at plus 100. That is free money. He is hammering shots on that right now. Over 60.5 total shots at minus 125. Hit that too. 
Ding! Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl both to score. Missed that. Oilers to win and over five and a half total goals at plus one fifty five. I missed that. The Oilers did win, but we didn't get over five and a half total goals. We got four total goals tonight against the Hurricanes. I just don't know what to expect. The Oilers have been off the ice for six days. I feel like they're going to be a little bit rust. I feel like they're going to have to um, get themselves going early, and if they don't, then that could be trouble. So I'm being conservative today. What I am taking those Evan Bouchard over two and a half shots at plus 120. That is free money to me. There are times when he gets three shots on a single power play. So I am going to absolutely take that as long as it is plus money. The easy money I've got, and this kind of is a little bit of a stretch now that I've dug into a little bit more. Oilers to register 30 plus shots at minus 120. Five bucks would turn into nine. Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid both to score a plus 400. That is juicy. That is my juiciest bet of the day. That is the only dragon I'm chasing. Five bucks would turn into 25. And the can't miss parlay over six and a half total goals. And Leon Dreisaitl to register a single point at minus 110. Five dollars would turn into nine fifty four. As you can see, I'm a little bit more conservative, just a touch, because I don't know what's going to happen. The others haven't played in a minute. I feel like I could get hurt. I feel like it might go well. We shall see how it goes. You're listening to Edmonton's best dating podcast for hopeless hockey fans. Better late than never. With your love guru, Bagged Milk. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. For Trilogy Oilfield Rentals, it is time for the Righteous Sack Beating. Of course, Trilogy Rentals are an established provider of tools and expertise across multiple oil field disciplines, specializing in rentals, pipe recovery, abandonments, and completions. Currently, they maintain full-time operating units, Provost, Weyburn, and Kindersley. This is the time when I get to put my fancy button on, fancy button on and tell you what kind of tools I got. <gasps> Rental tools, fishing tools, coal tools, drilling tools, mills and bits, completion tools, any tool for any job. TrilogyRentals.ca. I don't really have our righteous sack beating this week. In fact, I had a pretty good week. I mean, there are things that annoy me. I'm not going to get into it right now. If they continue to go the way they are going, I will absolutely unload the clip. But right now, we are being patient. And I'm turning it over to you because I've got three messages two righteous sack beatings one from chad one from nick so we're gonna give chad the intro you want to see a man boy i'll show you a man kick me in the jimmy and see what's bothering him hey bm uh i've got a righteous sack beating this week um it's kind of a two for two things that have just kind of annoyed me about the whole way the corporate world is going and how we don't get shit for the money that we pay for stuff oh okay. um first one being Are we talking inflation Are we talking economics i'm glad you came this is my specialty i just went to the bank to try to deposit money i have a side hustle i wanted to deposit cash into my bank account good for you 7 40 at night can't walk into a bank anymore there's mm. those glass divider things between the outside of the bank and the atms yep why why is the bank door locked anymore this is like the third time i've tried to do this now you can't do it anymore they just lock them it's just, it's just done. Mm-hmm. At least for TD, who I'm with, mm. um, that's bullshit. You take fees from me every month to hold my digital currency. You don't do anything for me other than just take my money. Secondly, I and I did end up getting it. I was trying to book an MRI. You can't talk to somebody anymore because they don't want to pay a receptionist anymore. Yeah. The MRI that I paid for out of pocket because I didn't want to wait for like three months was eight hundred fifty dollars. You don't think that. A lit like two percent of that could pay for a receptionist to talk to people instead of no 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 e- send us this form and we'll call you like why can't I talk to somebody anymore? It's just ridiculous. Like I get okay, digital is helpful in one way, but it's also just making the world kind of shittier. I'm I'm kind of done with it. I'm kind of with you, uh, and I've never had. Uh, hopefully, they are more. I went well, by the way. Um, I have that with a lot of just services. You know, I I had an issue with my Telus, my home services a little while ago, and I was tweeting complaints about it because ultimately what happened was the same thing you're describing. I couldn't get a person on the fucking phone. It would go, so try our digital help menu. So you go talk to the robot on the website and it goes, I don't understand your request. I don't understand your request. Have you tried to call in customer service? I go, you're going to make me pop a fucking blood vessel in my head i'm gonna have an aneurysm or something you know what is this why can't we talk to people do nobody just want the jobs are we that cheap as companies now i don't know the answer to that but ultimately is very annoying the banking thing i find that interesting because i haven't stepped foot in a bank in quite some time 
they really are just a, <laughs> a digital holder of my bits and bytes, aren't they? I put in my bits and bytes. They get deposited. I look at my bits and bytes online. They go, there's your bits and bytes. And I go, thank you. Thank you for letting me have that. Can I withdraw it? Maybe. Can I put it on my credit card? Sure. Is it all real? No, none of it is real. Can I pull out all my money at one time from the ATM? Probably not. What if we all did it together? Banking failures. That's what happens. I'm with you, Chad. I'm with you. How old are you, by the way? I feel like we're the same age. Maybe? Anyway, we got Nick up next. Here's the intro. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. Maybe my RSB will be that this is three full minutes of Nick complaining, but we'll see what it's like. Hey, Big Monk. I got a little guest righteous sack beating. Um, Go for it, pal. I had two of them, actually. I tried to fit them on the same voicemail, but it didn't come out well, and it kind of sounded like I hate kids. If you missed last week's podcast, Nick admitted that he takes multiple takes of his his voicemails for some reason. No one take Nick. He's got to squeeze it all in as condensed as possible, and that makes him sound like he's out of breath. Anyway, back to you. So I'm just going to split them up. My first righteous sack beating is the weather. <laughs> Now, I'm Southern Alberta, this. we get the schnooks. I don't, I don't think you guys get them up in Edmonton. Um, so having periods of snow and melt and then warm and cold is not uncommon. <laughs> what is uncommon is it for it to be fucking warm every day. <laughs> it sounds like he's out of breath. <laughs> Nick, it's all I can focus on after you admitted that you try and squeeze all of these in on take two or take three. It's all I can think about. You're going to complain about something I spent five minutes talking and praising earlier. Maybe we're just not going to be on the same page today, Nick. Maybe not today. So I'm recording this Monday morning. Tomorrow in Lethbridge, it is supposed to be 17 fucking above. Hell yeah. 17 degrees in December. What the fuck? Awesome. It's really not putting me in the Christmas spirit. And... Well, that that I understand. Christmas spirit, especially if you're Canadian, you've never done like a you know, hot Christmas anywhere else. It's very, very much what you see in a movie. You look outside and maybe there's some snowflakes falling gently as you unwrap your gifts and enjoy a warm cuckoo. But right now, everything just looks brown and dead. For me, I've had hot Christmases. I've had plus 40. I've had plus 30. I've been to Mexico. I was in Thailand. I was in Australia. Like I am super into this. Even though it is completely abnormal, I can't I understand the, uh, don't hit me with your science about droughting later on. I'm enjoying now. I'm living in the moment, people. The exams coming up for university, fuck, I need to be in the Christmas spirit. Uh, and then I love skiing. That I agree with. Like, I don't know, is Marmot Basin even open? Marmot Basin. We're going to be going out to Jasper in January, by the way, for the uh, the pond hockey tournament. <laughs> provided that the uh, <laughs> provided that the lakes are frozen. Um, knob quad opening December twenty twenty three. Seventeen centimeters new snow since Sunday morning. It is snowing in Jasper. Marmot Basin is open. Nick, get on out there. Nineteen centimeters over the last four days, according to SkiMarmot dot com. I love. I've skied twenty plus days a year since I was five. I love to ski. Hmm. You know what you can't do when there's no snow? Ski. Like, it would be a perfect break before exams is to go to the mountains and ski. Get on up to well, Jasper. Fucking Castle Mountains only got the bunny slope open because, hey, there's no snow. And I ain't paying to go ski that shit. So the weather, fuck you. You get my Twig and Berries Cold Performer of the Week. Twig and Berries Cold Performer of the Week. Wow. That is going back to O&R from... Two years ago, probably. Three years ago. Nice pull from you, Nick. Should I play the second one or am I done with Nick? Mm, we already disagree about the weather. I do understand the uh, wanting to go skiing. I also would like to go skiing. Can't do it in the city. Those hills are obviously not open. There's been no snow. They don't have enough fake snow to open it. But in the meantime, I'm enjoying it. All right, Nick, we'll give you a chance. Hey, Big Milk, part two of my guest righteous sack beating here. Ahead, um, this is just something that pisses me off, and I've been seeing it a lot lately. Um, it's when at hockey games, you know those kids who bring like uh, poster boards and they go stand at the glass and warm up, and they're like, <laughs> Is this the one you had to redo because it sounds like you hate kids? 
I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes now because if I get an inkling that you hate kids, I'm just going to call you out on it. Hey, Connor. I'll rock, paper, scissors you for a stick. Or, hey, Leon, <laughs> I'll trade you Tic Tacs for your jock strap. <laughs> Those kids piss me off so much. <laughs> Why, then, man? When I see an adult. Why? They're little, they're children. <laughs> they're children. <laughs> They've got that certain joie de vivre, you know? What's this guy's deal anyway? Listen, I'm Satan, the Lord of fucking darkness. I hate everybody. My insides are fiery goo at the best of times. But when I look at the warmies and I see a little kid being like, Hey, Connor, I took the time to make this sign. Can you throw me a puck you don't pay for? What's the fucking problem, Nick? Hold there. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here, buddy? You don't belong here. But you don't those belong. kids, like, you don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> Where do they belong? <laughs> I've watched my share of warm-ups down at the glass. I generally don't belong there either. I have seats way shittier. But I go down there, love me some warmies. It was cool when it started. The first few times I saw it, I'm like, that's cool. Now I'm fucking over it. Now I see it every time <laughs> they get pissed off. Because they're all the same. <laughs> the majority of them are the same, I should say. There are some heartwarming so ones stupid. and there are some funny ones, like the kid who was trying to auction off his mom's phone number. Hilarious. Or like the kid with brain cancer. But most of them are just stale and they're old. <laughs> well, I, well, you know what grinds Nick's gears? Children having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then god forbid a trade does happen and everyone's like what it's it's posted on instagram it's like what i can't believe this would happen what the fuck is this like it happens every fucking game it's every fucking game and there's like 200 kids trying to get shit like it's not unique it's old and i'm sorry to all the kids <laughs> I, if that was your second take or the one that you actually submitted for that part of the righteous sack beating, what did the first one sound like? I kind of want to hear that one. Because if the first one made you sound like you hate kids, what is it? That's take two or three. <laughs> I like that you're acting as though you're the one paying for the shit that the kids want. <laughs> uh, you know what? If you have kids and you want to bring a sign to the game, I'm good with it. Just don't tell Nick. If you want an unlicensed doctor's note or an unlicensed permission for your child to bring in a sign, hoping that Connor will give him something during warmups, then I'm all for it. I am all for it. And there you have for Trilogy of Field Rentals, the Righteous Act. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. You ever get so damn frustrated you don't even know what to say? Well, of course you do. Because you're a fan of the Edmonton Oilers. And you're listening to Better Late Than Never. The voicemail remains unsponsored. So today I'm going to dedicate... I'm, you know what? I'm just going to start dedicating the voicemail to you. You, the listeners. You, the contributors. You're the one that make me laugh during this podcast. You're the ones that make me feel like it's worth doing this. And for that reason, I dedicate this all to you. This is the listener-sponsored podcast, except for Nick, because he hates kids. Right? Right. First voicemail, what do you guys say? Oh, by the way, programming note, a bunch of you, your voicemails got cut off because of corrupted files on SpeakPipe. So SpeakPipe is essentially the little service I use for the voicemail. I downloaded probably eight that were all corrupted. I thought it was my MacBook. Tried it on a different computer that I have in my house. Same issue. So if your voicemail got cut off, I don't know what you want me to tell you, man. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Make a sign. Bring it to the Oilers game. Show up in warm-ups. Ask Nick for something. He will pay for it out of his own pocket. Go ahead. Good afternoon. It's been a while. Mm. I'm thinking of something to say with the new earbuds, just testing them out on better late than never. Ooh, upgrade. It's probably a bit rubbish, actually. It sounds a bit echoey. Mm. You perverts. <laughs> Up the knob. I think you sound all right. I think you sound all right. Some fresh earbuds for Donkey Volley. Is this another one where you're testing out them earbuds? I hope so. You're listening to Donkey saying Noblonge. 
double hooks. <laughs> no, it sounds blood. like um, <laughs> a cock smear. No, it doesn't. Shut up. <laughs> no, blouse. <laughs> Are these all donkey volley? What's this one? Hey, Big Milk. How's it going? Hi, buddy. Uh, it's, it's Saturday. Uh, I actually just listened to... By the way, I hate that you're doing this in your car. Not because I have a problem with you doing it in your car, just the background noise. I want to hear you, man. I don't want to hear the roads. I don't want to hear the mean streets of Edmonton. Uh, what was Nation Radio, I think it was. And uh, they were talking about whether they thought that the our record would be pretty much the same, whether we fired Woodcroft or not. Like, was it worth it that he got, like, a blah, 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 all that. Um, to be honest, I really, really like what Knobloch's been doing. Yeah. With the line pairings and keeping the consistency. I'm Team Nobby. Listen, I loved Woody as well. Big, big Woody guy. But I'm now I'm a Nobby man. I'm not going to dwell on the past. Listen, Woody's hanging out. I don't know where he's at. I wish he would give us updates. What do you just update? Like, sign up for Instagram or something. Show us how you're on the beach. I'd love to know what kind of cocktails you're having. He's getting paid three schmill. This year and next, he's doing fine. Chances are he's going to take the job in Ottawa whenever that schmuck gets fired anyway, but that's just my own personal guess. Back to you. I honestly think that's the only thing that really has kept us in some of these uh, games where if they just have to play consistently, and I think that's helped them play a 60-minute game because as far as I can tell, since that last period in Carolina, they played solid, full games. Amen. Maybe not always be leading, but they never gave up at any point. Um, so I, I really like that. Um, I like how he utilizes McDavid and Drysidle, uh, cause they are an impact players. It is interesting how he puts them together. And we've also seen, uh, coach Knoblauch per donkey volley put Nuge, uh, Nuge McDavid and Drysidle together, even for just like tasty little shifts at the end of periods. We haven't seen that since Todd McClellan. I want to say it's been a minute and I like it. I'm with you. I'm on Team Nobby. But the fact that Woody was just always switching to them, you know, anytime it got a little tough, it was just a quick switch, and then they'd be playing together, and it wasn't working. And I like how he uses them at certain times in the game. Um, so I don't agree that we'd be in the same place with Woody because it felt like he just kept hitting a wall and just kept trying to get through that same wall instead of going around the wall. Um, so, yeah, I don't agree, and I think Knobloch is... Maybe not better, but different enough. I'll buy that. I think with Jay Woodcroft, uh, and I'm not going to dwell on this because he's been gone for a minute, but uh, I think with Jay Woodcroft, it's it's important to remember that Connor was not Connor early in the season. He was battling the injury or whatever was going on. Leon Dreisaitl was not scoring like Leon Dreisaitl. If those two were on the runs that they are currently on, Evan Bouchard, if he was on an Evan, uh, eight-game point streak, if Evander Kane had eight ga- goals in nine games or whatever it is, would he probably still be here? But the reality is none of that was happening, so it is just guesswork. And Chris Knobloch, or Knoblauch, he's been given the opportunity. He's making some adjustments that are interesting. I'm curious to see what tonight's game against the Hurricanes look like, and I'm not going to talk about it again. 4-2 win coming. Because they've had the six days off to practice. What changes? Are there going to be anything? Like little subtle changes? What's going on? I'm looking forward to seeing it. Again, I'm Team Nobby. I'm not here to dwell in the past, baby. Let's move on. So, Knob Launch is going to dick us into the playoffs. <laughs> I feel cocksure we're going to get there. <laughs> Maybe Peter uh, in presence. Uh, fuck it. All right, let's do a load of cock jokes. We've been there. <laughs> let's go, Oilers. This is the dunk here. Oh, God. What are you regretting this? <laughs> Listen, I've always been saying that this podcast needs more dick. And now that the Oilers are on a run of dick-related coaches, now is the time to bring your best dick jokes, people. Come on! Penis. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That was very, very, that was very good in real time. I very, very much appreciate that. Thank you. Mm, cock. Thank you. See, this guy gets it. This donkey volley knows exactly what I need. Looks like there's a bunch of other voicemails from him that are only two seconds long, so I got a lot of dick coming my way. I'm super excited about it. Hey, BM. Hey. Maynard. Maynard, what's going on? Um, I have an Oilers Nation righteous sack beating. Oh, shit. Hang on one sec. 
If you're going to do an impromptu RSB, I'm going to give you this. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. There you go, pal. Go ahead. So I have this issue or maybe it's a disorder. I don't know where I get songs and jingles stuck in my head. I too have that. I'm going to call it a disorder. Uh, if you give me a catchy, catchy jingle, it will be in my head for all of time. That's what daffodils do. They let the spring and winter run through. If they turn rainy skies sunny, then I can try to. That's what, that's what daffodils do. So the annoying Rogers commercial, I won't even mention it. Thank you. That was an issue. Um, if I hear Zombie by the Cranberries, I'm great song for a week. Great song. So you guys introduced me to Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage. Ah, uh, Liam's favorite. Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage. Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage. I don't even know where that came from. Liam, uh, Liam brought that up months ago on ONR, probably in the off season. And it just kind of stuck as a button on the bar because it's so stupid. That's Liam's sense of humor though. He just finds the weirdest things that are funny. And then I latch onto him and I'll never let it go. Lovely. So it's bad enough that that gets stuck in my head. Sure. I watch a lot of sports. Do you have any idea how many football players are named Jones? <laughs> I'll tell you, 33 <laughs> NFL players are named Jones. So that basically means every NFL game has somebody named Jones that reverts me to barbecue and foot massage. And to make matters worse, <laughs> on Sportsnet, the sponsor is Montana's. Hmm. Your home for barbecue. Of course. And foot massage. Thank you. Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, play La Bamba. Let's go, Oilers. Shout out to Liam. Inspiring the nation. Inspiring us to be stupid. That's our default setting, by the way. This company was born on stupidity. It was raised on it. Hang on, I've got another two-second message. I'm guessing I know what Donkey Volley wants to say. Wanga. Wanga, I love it. English dick. She loves dick. This guy, he just can't miss. Fucking Donkey Volley, he knows all the hog talk that Satan loves. You dirty boy. Hey, Big Milk. So I was listening to an old episode of Real Life uh, mm -hmm. while I was doing some work. Uh, and uh, one of there was a reading, like, uh, reviews for Real Life. And sure. one of the people asked, who the fuck is Chalmers and why is he on this show? Yeah. And they kind of, they said that Chalmers, Wani, and Jay are like childhood buddies. Like, they've yep. been friends since they were kids. 100%. So my question to you is, who the fuck is Rick? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying Rick doesn't deserve to be on Oilers Nation. Like he's good, but I just want to know how the hell a guy who's the manager of the pint got started in this company and is apparently just on podcasts. Like, is he also like childhood buddies with Jay Wani and Chalmers? Like, and is that just never dressed, or is or is Rick something different? Are they like? adult friends or like how how who does rick know how did rick is he someone's friend can you just tell me who the fuck rick is <laughs> i'm gonna play this clip for rick and it's gonna be so good so long story short rick is the gm at the pint downtown and for a long long time very very long time uh weathers nation our official home was the pint Every event we did there, every draft party, every, um, you know, just watch along, every viewing party, uh, lottery parties, you name it, we held it there. We did our 15th anniversary party last season at the Pint downtown. So because of that, we just got to know Rick really well. And he always took really good care of us just as that guy. He knew that we were going to be in there. He was going to look out for us. He was going to make sure that we had a good time. And as the company started to grow, we were just friends. Like, Oilers Nation Radio, when I was putting together the original group, like, I started that podcast now, 
I don't remember how long. I want to say 2015-ish, roughly. I, I wish I could tell you when I actually started that podcast. But when I'm putting t- when I was putting together like the roster for it, if you want to call it that, I, I was looking for people that had different voices. And originally it was me, uh, Chris the intern, it was Nation Dan, it was Coomsy. And we were just looking for somebody different because if you listen to some of the first earliest episodes of that podcast, and I'm not saying you should because they're terrible, um, it was just missing something in the dynamic. Dan has always been good at being positive all the time, but Dan is positive to a point. Rick is positive to a fault. If you say the Oilers are bad at anything, he will be the first to jump in and defend the organization. He will yell at you. He will talk over everybody. And I love the guy. He's been my roommate on countless nation vacations. Anytime we would go to Calgary on a bus trip, we was always me and Rick were always roommates. So we just became buddies organically from spending so much time together at events. And as we were, when I was uh, for Oilers Nation Radio, as I was putting together the roster, I was looking for a different voice. And I thought of him and I just go, man, that makes all the sense in the world. I actually thought he was only going to be in every now and then, but after the first couple episodes he was in, I don't remember who he was yelling at, but I was just like, he's got to be here all the time. And now I just couldn't imagine Owen radio without him. Like, sure. There are weeks where he's not in cause he has to work or whatever. Like he wasn't on last week. Cause he had, uh, he had something going on with his car, but ultimately I just couldn't imagine doing that podcast without him. I can't imagine doing nation vacations without him. And I can't imagine a big part of my career at the nation network or there's nation without him. He's one of my, he's a, he's a great friend. He's a great buddy. We've had the best times together. We've won a bunch of money together gambling. We've just had some ridiculous moments together. We've thrown our hats together. He's taken care of me countless times when I'm out on the town. And I will do anything I can to repay the favor, even if that means just looping him in on podcasts twice a week. I know he's on one year's world too, so I guess he's in three three podcasts a week for us, right? I love him. I love the guy. I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for. Not a childhood friend, just kind of like we met as adults. Like I've been full-time now at The Nation. It, coming up 10 years is my anniversary, full-time at The Nation in February. Uh, I've been a contributor for about 15 years but full-time 10 years. And one of the very, very first people I met that I was introduced to by Wanye and Jay at that time was Rick. And they go, if you need something, if you're down here, he's your guy. And now he's my guy. Love to have him on the podcast. He is one of the greats. Love that dude. He is one of my best friends. Great, great guy. Hope that answers the question anyway. A term for a male appendage that is acceptable to both genders, or even three genders. Oh, God. I've just um, turned myself into a quarter here. Oh, good Lord. Um, Yes, sorry about that. Hmm. Just try to be funny. Not be a first. Dick. Dick, there it is. There it is. Hey, Big Milk. Hey, buddy. here. Long time since I've been on the show. Hey, man. I would just want to talk about the frickin' NHL app. Sure. It used to be like the Edmonton Oilers app, and then last yes. year it was like the Edmonton Oilers NHL app. I had to get and rid of it. You could actually see the schedule. And the- I had to get rid of it. The, their app is so shit. The UX, the user experience is awful. I actually find that what they did with their websites this year is also awful. Just not a big fan. Not a big fan. Back to you, Laird. Games. Now it's the NHL app, and you don't get to see any of it. You have to go through each day and... It's not like the old app. I fucking hate it. It used to be good. Now it is shit. Why does this always happen? Sometimes I feel like companies overthink what people want. They want to tell you what you want as a consumer on some of these things and not listen to what you actually need from their app. Schedule is a great, great example of that. Laird, I'm with you. I actually deleted it a while back, that app, because it's terrible and I refuse to use it. And it's for reasons like this, for reasons like the schedule. You know where I check out the schedule in a nice little calendar view? Weathersnation.com. That's where we're going to end off the voicemail that is sponsored by all of you. As we wrap up the podcast, it is 6 o'clock. The Oilers play 90 minutes. I'm excited to watch some hockey. Currently, I've got the Penguins and the Lightning on behind me. We've got an offside review happening. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. 
please keep leaving voicemails. Check out for the link in all of my social profiles. It's in the link tree. Leave me a voicemail, everybody. That's where we're going to wrap up the podcast. A lot of good things going on. A lot of good messages. A lot of... That's okay. Sometimes you need a little schwanz in your life. By the way, anybody a Howard Stern fan? R.I.P. Ralph Sorello. Stunned when I saw that today. Hey, now. If you are not a fan of The Stern Show and have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay, too. That's where we're going to wrap it up. We're going to leave it. And I will talk to you next week, unless there is something interesting that may require an emergency podcast. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.